Assalamualaikum. Morning, guys. How are you? Right. Bear with me. Right. So, the essentials of a fat loss workout. I have touched on this before. If you go through my videos, you will see it. Right. For a workout to be absolutely best from a physiological point of view, right, um, nothing, nothing is better. Absolutely optimal from a physiological point of view. Understand this, okay? From a physiological point of view, right? Uh, it has to burn the maximum amount of calories, number one. It has to burn the maximum amount of calories within the given, given time frame. That doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be sweating buckets, okay? So maximum amount of calories. Secondly, it has to build muscle tissue. Because for every pound of muscle tissue you gain, your body requires an additional 50 calories uh, a day to sustain that. So if you burnt... If, if, sorry, if you built 10 pounds of muscle, that means your body will need an additional 500 calories a day just to sustain that. So that means you can eat another meal. That's, and when we talk about increasing metabolism, that's the only way you can increase your metabolism is by increasing muscle tissue. So you have to burn the maximum amount of calories. Sorry, so the optimal workout will, fat loss workout will, uh, burn the maximum amount of calories with, with, within a given time frame. It will increase your metabolism so you can eat more food um, and get away with it. You won't store it as fat. Um, having muscle tissue generally helps you to still store less fat because muscle is a glycogen store. It's the storage, it's a carbohydrate store. So if you have a bigger carbohydrate store, you can consume more carbohydrates and you won't get fat. And it, muscle also makes you more insulin sensitive. Um, so therefore, once again, your carbs get channeled towards supporting you building muscle, sustaining that muscle, and also your body kind of adapts to that need. Now your body, because you're training your muscles every day, um, or not every day, but you're training them regularly, your body is clever. It now knows that, that it needs those carbohydrates to fuel the, that type of training. So that's what it will do. The majority of problems that people have with carbohydrates is because you're inactive and you're lazy, right? Because you don't do anything. If for train, for individuals that train, carbohydrate, carbohydrates are absolutely essential. They're, they're, they can be your best friend, right? And, and you'll know this when you start training properly, right? And we've mentioned previously about the difference between exercising and training, right? Go back and watch those videos. There's a difference. Right, a weekend warrior, you're going on the flipping stationary bike for two to ten seconds and just, you know, um, mindlessly pedaling away. That's not training, right? That's not training, right? So, so we said it has to uh, the optimal fat loss workout has to um, build muscle tissue, burn the maximum amount of calories within the session. Next, it has to burn the maximum amount of calories outside the session. And we know after a workout where you've used compound movements, that means you're using the bigger movement patterns, and that's the kind of workout you even get in my free free five-day challenge. I give you the most basic template of a compound movement-based workout. Okay? So it has to... Uh, so if you use the larger muscle groups, you, you cause a lot of uh, microtrauma, that microtrauma needs to heal. That microtrauma, um, you see, your body needs to repair that. In order to repair that, guess what it turns to? It turns to fat stores, right? So up to four, for 72 hours, your body, your metabolism is significantly higher. Um, right, so one study showed that it's up to 460 calories a day. Your body requires extra to repair those things, but that study, they, they weren't able to replicate it. So we don't go off isolated, isolated studies. That's what charlatans do. They look at one isolated study with small uh, number of participants, and then they give, give you a supplement or something like that and pretend that, okay, this is the end all and be all. That's not how legit um, professionals or legit coaches look at studies. We don't look at one isolated study with a small sample size. The majority of studies, um, when you look at them, uh, when you do a meta-analysis, we call it, uh, or, or systematic reviews 
of studies, then you find that um, uh, then you find that it's around 160, 180 calories a day extra you burn from um, a workout where you've used compound movements, as opposed to cardiovascular training where you a you've not stimulated muscle growth. Number one. Um, number two, um, your your um, it's called epoch. Right? That, that's, what they, that's what they claim. This isn't actually epoch. After weight training, it's not actually epoch. Epoch is exercise post oxygen consumption. So that means how much how much oxygen you consume after the workout. Based off of that, we can tell how many extra, extra calories you burn. And get this, HIT, which is supposed to be the king of epoch, right? HIT. Maximum amount of cal uh, calories you burn after HIT training, which they call the afterburn, is only 50 50 8 to 50 so all these rubbish headlines that you see uh, the sensations headline epoch from hit and all that stuff no 50 is the max resistance training 170 168 on average for across the board right that's something to do with the fact that when you're doing hits you're working at a, 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 a high how first of all you're not damaging your muscles Right? So that's where a lot of this calorie burn comes from, is the muscle trauma. Right? When it's not damaged in a bad way. Uh, Micro trauma is the little tears that you create to help, uh, so to, uh, to stimulate the muscle to grow. Okay? It's not in a bad way. That doesn't happen as much with um, most forms of cardio, including HIIT. Plus the duration of HIIT is, is so short because you're training at such an intensity. And the duration, <clears throat> the intensity and duration dictate how many calories you burn afterwards. Okay, so HIT is not this awesome fat loss formula that you, you've been led to believe uh, with insanity and stuff like that. Secondly, in order to, most of you, most people that come to me, they want a specific shape. They want a shape similar to mine. They want a shape. They want to, um, they want to look aesthetically pleasing. You need to build muscle tissue. You need, again, you need to build muscle tissue. And without resistance training, Nothing builds muscle tissue. You can do hit all day long. You're not building muscle tissue. You can run all day long. You're not building muscle tissue. Hit is slightly better than just regular running. With all those things, you burn calories. And there's a brother that was running a lot, right? I'm not going to mention him, but you most of you probably know him, right? Look at the, look at him. Does he look healthy, right? Um, I've seen he's been doing loads of running. Uh, uh, I, I just apps, uh, not in on my dance way thingy. Um, for some charity and, and man these guys go crazy with the running have you seen the state of them at the end of three months four months and they look they look ill they look they don't look well they don't look healthy at all they look they look they look em emaciated right um because that doesn't build muscle tissue you just become a smaller version of yourself you become skinny fat that's all you become right um I'm, I'm going I'm going off on a tangent now also right, when I've done courses on, on aging um, population and how to help them once again the the biggest thing that contributed to their wellness health wellness testosterone levels all of that stuff was maintaining and building muscle tissue so you could once again if you are not resistance training and you are not building muscle tissue you will not never ever ever get that shape that you want right the, the, the that you want okay next okay so um so yeah we said it increases your your calorie burn after the workout increases them um, uh, so, uh, so incre you burn a lot of calories in the session outside the session then it permanently increases your metabolism so you permanently burn more calories so that th those are the three key ingredients of a fat loss workout and you will only ever get that only ever get that from resistance training now if you are clever and smart right if you're a coach and you know what you're doing you will program this resistance training in such a way because there's some caveats to it right a long-term study showed that the people who lost the most weight and kept it off from one exercise and you're going to be surprised at this it wasn't any of these formal forms of exercise. Guess what it was? It was walking. Walking. They found that walking was the best fat loss exercise for people who were obese and lost weight and kept it off. 
And there's a reason for that. And the reason is people need self-efficacy. They need self-efficacy. They need to feel confident being able to do the thing that they're doing. And it needs to be easy. Right? And walking is easy and everyone knows that they can walk. And that's where the problem comes in with the resistance training. Most of you who who may have, may have never gone to the gym, um, uh, you, you self, uh, what's the word, self-conscious, and you don't know how to train, you don't feel comfortable doing those movements, um, so you don't do it. So you never get rid of it and you don't do it. And that's where a coach comes in. Like you might go in and someone tells you you have to do a barbell back squat. No, you don't. No, you don't. In fact, you never ever in your life have to do a barbell back squat. But you do need to train those five patterns. You do need to train the hinge, the squat, the, lo the lunge, the uh, push, the pull. But there's a massive continuum of exercises that do that. I start you off. So people that think, okay, body weight. No, it doesn't even start with body weight. It starts with below body weight. So for example, right? You don't, the barbell back squat is, the, is, the, is at the one end of the spectrum of that um, movement continuum, it's called, okay? So barbell back squat is at the top end, right? Once again, if you're in, if you have some injuries and limitations, you don't need to do it because your goal isn't to be a power lifter. If you're trying to be a power lifter, yes, you have to barbell back squat because the sport demands that. And there's fixed criteria where you have to uh, dip below a certain level or go below parallel and things like that. Um, but if you're not a power lifter, you don't have to do it unless you enjoy it. But you, there's, there's dozens of exercises that fit the squat pattern. So you train the squat pattern. So as busy professionals, you haven't got time to learn about. There's literally, I've got a, an exercise library of 300 and something exercises and growing, right? So as busy professional dads, you haven't got time to go stress and, and, and think about 380 exercises in every tiny training every tiny muscle group all you need is five to six exercises that cover every single human movement patterns once again right squat hinge lunge push pull and your core that's it right you need to pick the right exercise that's suitable for you where you are based on your goals and you can circuit them that's it for fat loss that's fantastic after you've lost fat if you then specifically want to optimally build muscle then you can start adding other exercises your workouts will get slightly longer facial will tell you that Aslan will tell you that because that's you are now focused on building muscle but you can still look pretty decent and good just just doing those five exercises in that manner and you can use different protocols right uh, you know different types of like crossfit emom and this that and the other okay now, now for the caveats. So what I said one is, um, one is people are not, people don't feel comfortable doing it, okay? And we spoke about walking because it was easy, right? Secondly, you need to be able to, then, then there's progressively overload. People don't understand prog progressive overload. Progressive overload is where you're trying to add weight or increase the reps. And once again, the optimal fat loss workout is not going to have 30, 40 reps because that takes too long and you don't need to do that, right? Um, um, and it's not going to be really low rep either because then you're going to have to rest longer and you're not going to burn as many calories within a short time frame. Um, so, but you do need to progressively overload and, and that means just adding more uh, weight. And once again, in my program, I'll tell you that, look, start off with a weight that you can do about 10, 10, 12 reps, right? Because we're working on mainly aiming for fat loss. Build that up to 15 or 16. Once you can do that, Increase the weight and it'll drop you back and then just repeat that. That's all you need to worry about. You don't need to worry about any fancy thing. And by the way, your muscle does not have cognitive function. Your muscles don't get confused. Okay? So this thing about doing all these weird, wacky exercises to confuse your muscles is a load of rubbish. Right? Your muscles don't get confused. Yes, if you are train training, again, if you are training for building muscle, the purely that you want to optimal, optimally build muscle, then you'll train differently. And one of the things you do need to take into consideration is you need to vary the exercises only slightly, only slightly, okay? So, if I was training my chest, okay, I would train one, uh, one exercise that targets my clavicular head 
uh, of my chest. That means the, the uh, muscle fibers that come come from the clavicle. That's the bone of, of here, or the upper chest, as you might call it colloquially, the upper chest. Not targets, but emphasizes that. Okay, because when muscles contract, they contract or they don't contract. They don't partially contract. Okay, so you have the exercises that target the. Uh, it's not target. Sorry, emphasize the upper chest. You'd have exercises that target the adduction. Right, adduction is where your hands come together. Right, so a, a fly. You have a fly exercise. You'll have uh, a push exercise that emphasizes the upper chest. Then you have a flat. Now it doesn't have to be the barbell bench press. It doesn't have to be. Even though the barbell bench bench press is great for overload. Once again. I, as a coach, know which every be, a, a unique benefit of every single exercise. I can tell you why this exercise might, might be better for you as an individual, not for everybody, why it might be better for you. Or this exercise might not be one of the right for you. You should be choosing this exercise. So from, from the list of exercises that, that emphasize, the, um, emphasize the upper portion of the chest, I would select the one that's best for you, for where you are right now based on your training age and your goals i will target i will choose the exercises that uh, uh, uses the does the adduction actually so once again you probably won't know this you probably go on instagram and see some idiot doing some daft thing and you think oh yeah this gym shark model who's hench right is doing this so he must be right and uh, and you see the most stupid th stupidest things on instagram the most stupidest things on the planet right so anyway so I'm really rambling on now, aren't I? But these they're very, very important points. Okay, so we spoke about progressive overload and exercise selection, right? Now here comes another little caveat, okay? When we say fat loss, we found that when we say fat loss, guess what happens? We have, uh, we have um, a large number of people, especially in this day and age of the snowflake generation, right? We have... A large number of people, they're called compensators. As soon as they exercise, what do they do? They start hibernating, right? Uh, and these are the people who never see weight loss, right? And they took a large groups of population, they took large, a large population sample and they tested this with people who claimed they had slow metabolisms and people who had fast metabolisms. And they, they tested their metabolism, but guess what? The metabolism was the same, right? So why is it that some people are exercising and not losing any weight and others are exercising and losing a lot of weight because of this one thing some people are compensators when they start working out they reduce all of the activities like after a workout they don't get off that sofa they sit down and they don't get off the sofa and they start eating more as well they feel they feel somehow that they've earned this right to eat extra donuts oh i've trained so i i need to treat myself right Man, I've seen this, right? I had, right? My ex is, uh, one of my ex is relative. I'm not, if I say, I'm not in too much detail, right? Uh, one of the uh, f female members in her family, she had about five or six stones to lose. Obese, morbidly obese. She would go on the treadmill, she'd go to the gym, she'd be on the treadmill for five or six minutes. And then on the way home, she'd stop off at Asda and get a big box of donuts. And I remember my ex was saying like, um, what are you doing with this big box of donuts? She goes, no, I'm, I, you know, I earned it. I treat, I'm treating myself because, you know, I went to the gym. So she went to the gym and she burnt 50 calories. And she bought this <clears throat> flipping box of donuts, all 12 of them. And she ate all 12 of them, like what? Like something like flipping 5,000 calories, right? So you have compensators. They compensate via extra food, and then they compensate via lack of activity. So prior to that, they may have been walking and stuff. Now they spend the whole day sitting, right? So it wasn't to do with their metabolism being slow. It was simply because they, simply because they, 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 they reduce the activity levels. So it's called NEAT, non-exercise thermogenesis. So they reduce their NEAT. Whereas then the other hand, you have other people, and this is a small minority, when they start exercising, they start to become even more active, right? So then they become conscious, oh, I'm exercising now, so they, they'll, they'll be conscious of their food, right? So they'll be conscious of the portion sizes, their food selection, and also they generally start moving around more, right? 
those are the people who see a really they see good weight loss when they start exercising now here's the here's the kicker what they found is that when you add the label fat loss to any workout the compensators it makes them compensate even more right so the a lot of people when you add fat loss to a workout the fat loss to the name people just think oh that it increases their their compensatory uh, uh, actions or behavior it increases their compensatory behavior how strange is that so that's why like see nobody knows that like that was a, a new to me I learned this last year I, I, uh, you know when I did this read this research I learned it and it was like whoa like I didn't know that was very very uh, you know surprising and quite an eye-opener uh, that when you add fat loss to and there's loads of other little things uh, that actually affect people's behavior um, one thing is um, if you don't tell people that they're they're training so you've got some people that if you tell the people that it's formal exercise they compensate if you if you don't mention exercise and you say we're gonna have this game we're doing this game and that game involves exercise they don't compensate how crazy is that All right so um, then there was um, um, also again if you make it enjoyable if if you know they found that people who was told that we're gonna walk as exercise and um, they, they compensated and people who were told like we're gonna listen to some music and we're gonna relax and this is gonna be uh, like walking meditation or something like that and it's 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 going to be a relaxation activity that we do they don't compensate <laughs> crazy isn't it well anyway there you go guys that's it okay so again essential an essential fat loss workout will involve will burn more calories in the session outside the session and will increase your metabolism for the long term but all of this all of this has to be in the sphere of something that's sustainable and practical for you if you absolutely abhor weight training then you don't need to do it right if you absolutely abhor weight training then you don't need to do it but the problem is you lose weight but you still won't get that shape that you're looking for you still will look skinny fat you won't get that shape okay that's one issue um, and secondly anybody that comes to me and they say to me look they hate weight training they prefer running cycling all that stuff I always dig to see why because about nine times out of ten or eight times out of ten they don't hate um, uh, weight training or training with weights recent training it's simply because the thing that we spoke about before they're not confident they don't have self-belief or self-efficacy so and they feel uncomfortable doing it that's why they hate it but if a good coach will not let, will try and minimize that discomfort by selecting the right exercises that's suitable for them right for example I will not now I won't anyway I used to years ago I won't give somebody a barbell a back squat straight away or a deadlift or a really complicated exercise that requires uh, you to have already built lots of other skills because so you you know it, it's, it's a graded movement pattern so some skills like barbell back squats require lots of things lots of you know bracing um, you know the mid four knowing how to hinge properly lots of lots of things now if you give someone that there's about 10 12 things that they need to think about and, and get right and then you're telling them oh you can't you're moving these out pushing these out your knees out right oh you're hinging oh uh, you're um, keep the natural curvature of the spine or oh, you're, you're hyper extending on the spine um, your your weights moving forward and you're telling them you know you're setting them up for failure they're doing 10 12 things wrong and you're telling them they tell them nine things that they're doing wrong they're not going to feel confident they're not going to feel confident doing that and it's going to it's just going to knock their confidence and they're going to feel like oh, i can't do this and they're going to hate it even more but if i said you know what let's just start off with box sits let's just let's just let's just practice on the hinge pattern we'll start off with box sits today i'll just air squats and we'll correct it so i will correct each everything that they need for the barbell back squat i will build them up systematically so we'll work on the hinge after they've got the hinge uh, I'll take them to move them, move them up the movement continuum. So then next they'll next they'll work on bracing. Next they'll work on uh, on um, <clears throat> making sure that the knees are not caving in, and so on and so forth. And so when they get to the barbell back squat, 
it's not going to feel anywhere near as uncomfortable. So that's what one of the things that I always like to figure out is, is the person, are they saying that they hate it because they're just not comfortable with it um, and they've never been taught it. Um, so anyway guys, I've covered a lot of things and it should give you an insight into how I coach. Um, and I hope you found, found it useful. Do share it, do comment, leave your question below. Right, take your time to watch this because there's golden nuggets of information that I've actually uh, covered in here. Uh, okay, anyway guys, Salaam Alaikum, speak to you soon.